Lords, I am extremely grateful to my noble friend Lord Hal for his kind and generous remarks to me, as I am uh, my noble friend Lord Goodlad. Uh, I agree with every single word my noble friend Lord Howell has said, with one exception. Kigali was not about heads of government. It was about a business forum, which I was privileged to chair, a youth forum and a women's forum. Very, very vibrant events. The business forum is an extraordinary event. Where else, apart from perhaps Davos, can you attract 1,700 businesses from 60 countries, 20 heads of state, uh, the President of the, Royal ba uh, of, of the World Bank, the President of FIFA even, and um, the Secretary General of the World Health Organization. It was an incredibly vibrant event, probably because there had been pent-up tension after four years of us sitting with COVID and not meeting each other face to face, but also it was in Africa. Africa, the Commonwealth had not been to an event like this for well over 10 years, and it was a terrific credit to our hosts uh, the Rwandan government that this was such a resounding success. Rwanda has proven uh, to be a country of formidable leadership. It was safe, secure, clean and uh, is a fast growing economy uh, lifting its uh, people out of poverty. The uh, statistics of course for trade in the Commonwealth and business are well known. It's 20% more competitive doing intra-Commonwealth trade because of common law, common language and um, uh, common uh, trade agreements. And uh, therefore, it should be well set to, for the British government to take benefit of it. But I'm afraid to say it has been asleep on its watch. It's uh, been encumbered inevitably by the Brexit, post-Brexit, situation and then subsequently COVID. And so I'm afraid I, I do think that it hasn't taken full advantage of its last four years of chair in office. And that perhaps manifested itself in the unfortunate circumstances surrounding the extension of the Secretary General's uh, con uh, contract where the UK led a campaign to change the Secretary General and unfortunately it failed. So the task ahead for the UK government is to repair those uh, bridges and to play catch up. There are signs, and I thank my noble friend the Minister who has been a stalwart supporter, and indeed uh, the noble Lord uh, Macdonald who kept us afloat whilst we needed it uh, for, by uh, sending provisions. So I'm very grateful to you both. But I do think uh, the opportunity has been missed and they now must turbocharge the relationship uh, and to ensure the Commonwealth uh, takes advantage of the showcases that are available. And one of them, as my noble friend Lord Billamoria said earlier, is about to be the Commonwealth Games. And where I say there are signs of it happening, I'm happily uh, chairing or co-chairing with the Department of International Trade uh, a business forum at that event which will involve his university. So it is important that the UK uh, really now uh, starts to uh, prioritise the Commonwealth. It isn't, of course, an alternative to the European Union, but it is this vast market that's available. And there are other problems ahead for the Commonwealth because, inevitably, Samoa are now the uh, chair in office, uh, next chair in office, de designate chair in office. That will be a difficult place for people to visit. It's a long way from anywhere, but it in itself is an opportunity. With the Chinese as an uh, uh, invasion of the uh, Pacific, as my noble friend Lord Howell has responded to, Samoa could be a very pivotal place for us to, uh, for the UK and other Commonwealth countries to establish uh, the power of democracy. And finally, the second opportunity presents itself is that of Sri Lanka, a country which is now on its knees with financial difficulties, uh, which has uh, sought succor from China for its investment, and it would give an opportunity for the Western democratic countries led by the United Kingdom and, and the Commonwealth to support them and to help them reinvigorate their economy. And finally, there's never been any mention of empire, as the Norman Lord Pracker suggested. There wasn't for three or five days uh, at Kigali, I'm happy to say. And I'm happy to say that His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales uh, arrived in triumph and left in triumph, and that 
is one of the great advantages this country has, as well as my noble friend, the Minister, who has carried out an excellent job on behalf of the Commonwealth for all these years.